At this time, we'll go to new business item 10D, and that is a paper streets discussion, and we'll invite up City Solicitor Tim Murphy. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council. I apologize uh, for being a few minutes late. Uh, dinner just ran a bit longer than I expected, and I thought you were going till 7.30, so my apologies well, for keeping just you Just to waiting. jump in, I think we did say 7.15 to 7.30, so I don't think you're technically late, so don't. Uh, <laughs> I, if you're in here and you're waiting on me, that's, that's my fault. I apologize. So tonight, um, the mayor and the administrator thought it would be helpful if we spent a little bit of time discussing paper streets, what they mean, how they work, uh, both for your benefit and perhaps for the benefit of the public that may be still watching tonight. We hope that's many, many people. So let me start by showing you, and <clears throat> this is a, a reasonably good example of a paper street. This, uh, as many of you know or, or have seen, is a, a subdivision plan drawn up by a developer architect or landscaper um, land surveyor, and as you can see, it shows a paper street. That one's coming off North Street, uh, Buxton Road, and it is uh, actually, as designed, intended to be just a private road, but it's designed to city standards, and what makes it a paper street is literally, it's on paper. This plan, uh, as you can see, is signed. Uh, it, it gets approved by the planning board, and then off it goes up to Alfred to be recorded. And that's what makes it a paper, uh, that particular street, a paper street. It is a street, by definition, on a recorded subdivision plan in a county court at the Registry of Deeds. It can be not simply York County, but any county in the state of Maine. Ours happen to be in York County. So what makes this, this particular street uh, unique, and it's actually timely tonight, because you took, took up the matter of two paper streets tonight when you addressed Apple Tree Lane and Eloise Way. Those also are currently shown on recorded subdivision plans up at the Registry of Deeds. They are still in their paper form. And the developer has built them out and is essentially asking you to take them, to make them public streets. This one is not going to be offered. Uh, it, it's intended that it's gonna stay private but nonetheless, uh, interestingly, once it's recorded in Alfred, uh, even if the developer does not offer it to you, uh, as was done in the case of Apple Tree and Eloise Way, you as a city, as do all municipalities in Maine, have what a right, a right that's called incipient dedication to actually take a paper street that is recorded on a subdivision plan and say, well, we actually want to make that a public way. We think there are important public interests that could be served by having a particular paper street converted from paper into an actual physical road on the face of the earth. Most times, we wait for the developer because we don't want to spend the money uh, wisely. That's, we let the developers do it. Uh, but there could be an occasion, and Maine law provides for this, where a municipality on its own decides it wants to accept a paper street. Uh, in fact, uh, back in the mid-90s, uh, Maine realized that there were literally hundreds and hundreds of paper streets in recorded subdivision plans throughout all the counties of Maine, and that they were becoming a problem for the towns to keep track of. There was always a question about, well, what's the status of a particular strip of land, who has rights in it, who can build in it? So the <clears throat> Maine Municipal Association, in conjunction with the courts and the state legislature, started to set some ground rules about these things. And they essentially created a law that said to municipalities, we're going to give you a 20-year period of time to make a decision on all the paper streets in your community. So back in 1997, Saco had dozens of paper streets on recorded subdivision plans. Uh, and Peter Morelli was a uh, former economic development director, was tasked with the mission of listing them all and making an initial determination whether the city wished to preserve its rights in some of those paper streets or whether it wanted to forego them. And <clears throat> those that it felt, the council felt, had a particular interest or concern of potential use, future use for the city, those were 
scheduled on a list that was recorded up in the Registry of Deeds. The, the list essentially saying, we, Saco, still have an interest in a bunch of these paper streets. We'd like to preserve our rights. If we didn't list the street back in 1997, then our rights in that particular paper street evaporated. The goal of the legislature was to slowly, over time, start eliminating all these paper streets so that the abutting landowners could be assured of what their title was. And that's, and that's part of what I, I want to talk about in particular is because there's confusion about these paper streets in the eyes of, of, of the public, I think, in particular. And, and keep in mind, these paper streets are all over the city. Um, the bulk of them, though, tend to be down towards the waterfront or out in the North Sauk area, the, the less developed portions of town, um, and, and also the beachfront. Um, so there's an interest in these areas, and the confusion runs because we think of them, and, the, and perhaps the public thinks of them, uh, because they're listed paper streets as somehow belonging to the city of Saco. And, and that's kind of a misunderstanding about these paper streets. The city does have a right to accept a paper street and take title. This is this phrase called incipient dedication. It's a power of the city to come and look on this particular plan, in fact, and say to this particular road, even though the developer hasn't offered it to us, we think there's an important public right or interest here and we'd like to build out this road and, and make it a public way. That's the city's right of incipient dedication. However, the underlying title in a paper street, so it's shown as paper in the Registry of Deeds, but actually the abutting landowners own to the middle of that paper street. They own, until it gets built out and is accepted by the city, Technically, the abutters will own to the middle section of a paper street. So they're not truly city roads until you vote to accept them. Title remains uh, with the abutting property owners. So the, where this has caused some problems in the past has been uh, the abutters don't always know they own it. We're starting to learn here at the city that even though the abutters own it, we haven't always uniformly taxed everyone for the additional land that technically they own because we think of it as potentially a paper street and therefore might someday turn to the city. And then the, the third aspect of the paper streets that has been a, a little bit of a cause for concern is that members of the public may think they have a right to travel over these paper streets, either by vehicle, but more likely by foot. Uh, so people can begin to see them as city property with the city, they as a member of the public being and having an opportunity to pass across the land that comprises the paper street uh, as if it were there physically on the face of the earth. And, and that simply isn't the case. In many cases, people who are the abutters of paper streets, regardless of where they live in the city, tend to think of that land as theirs, and, and it is. And so they will put fences, sheds, shrubberies, uh, park vehicles, all kinds of things we found over the years end up in paper streets. Um, and, and so people make good use of them a, as they should. So uh, this can cause confusion for the public if they think they might have a right to pass over these properties uh, because they don't understand why uh, an abutter may have put a garage on them. Now, the abutter is, these abutters that do put permanent improvements like garages are certainly at some risk because the city has the incipient right of dedication. They can, the city can take the land, and if we want to build out a road, and there's a garage on it, then the garage would have to come down. But in most cases, we're not going to take these paper streets. We might in a few, but in most, we haven't. Um, so the, the, those tend to be the issues that we see popping up. For you, we haven't been taxing the land as if it's owned by the butters. So that's, I can say, assessing is now looking at that, and. At least the last information I heard, we've we've. Re we are being, they are being taxed. Oh, good. That was, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that's a uh, something that hasn't been done in the past. So, um, the uh, it's good to generate an extra revenue because the people are exec essentially exercising dominion and control over these parcels of land. They view them as theirs, which they are until such time as the city chooses to accept them. I mentioned earlier that. 
1997, we had set up a list of paper streets we had an interest in. This is, was a fairly long project by Peter. Uh, in 19, uh, 2017, that list was expiring, so the city went through an additional year-long process of evaluating all the remaining paper streets we still had, and we created a second list. Uh, so the city has reserved an additional 20-year period that will run out in 2037 on a, a condensed list of paper streets. So if we had 50 paper streets in 2000, uh, 1997, we're probably down to 25 now in 2017. We certainly have shrunk the list because we found that some of them just aren't needed, uh, particularly the ones that have been preserved are down at the beachfront, uh, out of concern that we assure that the public always has access to the beach if we need it. Um, so that's kind of a, kind of, and I, I hope I haven't rushed through this, uh, but, but that's kind of the status of how paper streets work. They do exist on plans. There isn't a paper street in Saco that isn't shown on a recorded subdivision plan up in Alfred. Uh, so uh, they can be of value, but uh, in most cases, the ones that truly matter to the city, we've already accepted. Uh, so we're going to, at some point, have to go through a reevaluation process again in probably 2036. And you're always free to dispose of some prior to that point. And Tim, just so that in case anybody missed it, because it's an important uh, determinative, uh, the city has preserved its right on all the current paper streets yep. for another 20 years until 2037. Right. But, but preserving city rights are the city rights to someday take land by incipient dedication if we want to build a road. Those are not public rights to use that land. The land does belong to the abutters to the middle line. Um, and most, you know, we found neighbors get along, they understand sort of where the point is, and we don't go walking through their land for reasons we don't need to. Um, so that's one thing we're trying to make sure that the public understands, because we don't want neighbors fighting neighbors over rights to walk down paper streets when it, when it doesn't exist. Um, so, and that could be any part of the city. We have paper, paper streets in all the wards of the city. Any questions for City Solicitor Murphy? Councilor Berman. Some of the discussion, uh, Solicitor Murphy, has revolved around what rights having a paper road uh, provides to the public, uh, especially in regards uh, at, at the beach, to, to access mm. the beach. And, and you mentioned that in your last phrase, that we've kept them in, should, in order to provide access to the beach, should we ever need it. Does the existence of a paper road uh, along the beachfront provide any special rights or privileges to the public, to the no. city, to no. anything? No there's, no, there's no special rights, until we accept it. Uh, it it's, the fee interest belongs to the abutters, to the center line. And they can rightly exclude people. Uh, in most cases, we have preserved across the beachfront multiple points of access, because you'll see city-provided uh, boardwalks that cross over the dune uh, between Bayview and Kinney Shores and also between Bayview and Camp Ellis. There are, there are numerous access points. Um, I was down uh, off the ferry road, uh, King Street. I was down at King Street the other day. Um, right at the end of King Street, there's a... Um, crossing point. Uh, my memory is at the end of Pond, there might be a crossing point. Uh, certainly Bayview, uh, I believe there's towards the end at Kinney Shores, we have one uh, near Shore Avenue. I, I would say there's probably, and, and Pat's here, uh, Pat, how many, 10 maybe? Over a dozen? Yeah, so I mean qu quite a substantial number of access points on the beach right now. Uh, but you always are mindful of whether you need more and where they should be. And just a follow-up question. Does the existence of an access point to the beach affect the public's rights uh, along the beach at all? No, no, and thank you. That's an opportune question, Councillor. Sometimes we confuse the importance of access with the actual use of the beach itself. So, so let me describe it this way. Uh, of the two matters, access and beach rights, access is secondary. 
and, and I'll put it to you this way. Let's assume we only had one point of access, and that was Bayview. But from Bayview, you had complete rights over the entire beach, which is the legal position the city has always taken. Well, we only need the one access point because there's no portion of the beach that we're excluded from. But flip it around. Let's say we had 50 access points, but the beach was all private and blocked off. It wouldn't matter how many access points you have if all the beachfront owners could exclude you from using the beach. So of the two matters, it's preserving rights in the beach itself that is most critical to the city. We have multiple access points. The, the, no one's ever needed to get to the beach in Saco by either a helicopter or by an off offshore landing uh, from, a, from a vessel at sea. There is no problem with getting to the beach in Saco. Uh, we are always cognizant of protecting beach rights, uh, assuring that the public, his, which, it, which the public has always historically done in Saco. They've used all parts of the beach uh, from the top of the dune down to the water. They've recreated, they've dropped their towels, they've thrown frisbees, we've had lifeguard stands. The city's always historically used the beach. And it's, it's the rights of utes in the beach that are key. The access points are helpful because they allow us to not have to walk so far. Uh, but they're not the fundamental issue or critical issue. It's rights in the beach that are the most critical. Thank you. Any further questions for Tim Murphy? <clears throat> Councilor Johnston. Thank you. It's not so much a question. I just, I wasn't here in 97, but I was here in 2017, and I recall it being quite a lengthy process going through the paper streets. I know that Joe Laveria put all the documentation together, and council went through it several times before we came to oh, what seemed like more streets than was necessary by the time we finished it. And what I specifically recall was at that time, uh, the thought was since it had been 20 years, since 97 to 2017, that nobody had looked at those streets, it would be our goal to take up several of those streets every year so that in 2037, we weren't looking at 40 streets. And so I'm just bringing it up now because I think it kind of behooves of us not to send this off to a future council given how many hours we spent looking at those streets because I still stand where I believe most of them really aren't needed. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there and perhaps it gets brought to council in the future for us to discuss. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Dunn. I would concur with Councillor Johnson that if there's, no, if there's no actual plans to use something that doesn't even exist, why wait till 2037 for everything to just fall away, though, when we can be proactive about these things? And at the same time, if there are any access points that need to be improved, that's something we can focus on. But, you know, no point in litigating things that, to Mr. Murphy's point, don't even actually exist. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Purdy. Thank you. The only thing I would ask is if we could uh, be provided a list of the existing paper streets in Saco. Yep. Uh, Councillor, I'll have that uh, sent over to Brian's office tomorrow morning, first thing. Sure, absolutely. Any further discussion? City Solicitor Murphy, thank you very much. Happy to be here, anytime.